I'll tuck that aside. And so as we turn into James, the first chapter, verses 17 to 27, uh, he's uh, just using some very, very uh, descriptive language here, which includes his analogy of the mirror. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. For your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Yes, indeed, James is talking about a mirror today. Did they have mirrors back in Bible times? Yes, they did. Mirrors have been around a long time. Archaeologists have found mirrors going back as far as 5,750 BC. These were polished obsidian mirrors that have been found in Anatolia, dating back almost 8,000 years. Anatolia would be Asia Minor or modern day Turkey. The Egyptians made some mirrors out of polished bronze. And Egyptian mirrors are as old as Egypt itself. James is basically talking about mirrors to explain faith in action. A mirror gives an image. Faith leaves an impression. James is trying to say a mirror is a reflection of life. It is not life. Let us break this down without breaking the mirror. First, James goes over the basics. He writes, all good gifts come from above. How is it that all good gifts come from above? Because giving good gifts is a form of loving. It is loving our neighbor. Loving our neighbor is commandment number two. Second, James tells us that we need to have light in our life. He reminds us that God is the father of lights. If we want to see anything, we need to have light. If we want to see spiritually, we need to have God's light. Whether we are looking at real life or looking at a mirror, we need to have light. A mirror is no good to us without light. Life is pretty dreary without God's light. Trees need sunlight to make chlorophyll. Humans need sunlight to make vitamin D. Humans need God light to make sense of spiritual life. And third, James talks about the implanted word. By implanted word, he means the word of God in scripture and Jesus Christ. A mirror leaves an image God's word makes an impression. We look at a mirror and it does not change us. We look for God's word and it has power to change us. In a state fair time, I want to use a state fair example to explain the difference between implanting and impression. At the state fair, there's going to be a quilt room with all the beautiful quilts on display. Some of the quilts will have applique. Applique is where one piece is sewn on top of another. It is tacked on, so to speak. Now, out of respect for all quilters, I do not want anybody to think that I am calling applique tacky. I only said applique is tacked on. 
It is on the quilt, but is not sewn in the quilt. Quilt pieces that are sewn into the quilt are part of the whole quilt. Sewn in pieces are more likely to stay on the quilt. Our family has this one antique quilt. It has some applique on it. The applique pieces are more at risk of damage and getting lost. Applique is impressed upon the quilt. It is not implanted in the quilt. Back to the mirror analogy. Our reflection in the mirror does not last as long as an applique quilt, nor a whole cloth quilt. When we walk away from a quilt, it is still beautiful with all its colors. When we walk away from a mirror, whatever we saw, it is gone. A mirror image only lasts as long as we stand in front of the mirror. James is saying, please have faith that lasts longer than that. That is why James says we need to have faith and works. To say, I have faith and never act upon it is to leave our spiritual life back on the mirror, so to speak. Another example of things on the surface and things on the inside comes from a college friend who belonged to the Marine Reserves. He was rated as an electrician's assistant level one. His second weekend of reserve duty, he was sent to North Carolina to do electrical work. That was okay, except he and the other electricians from Nebraska barely had any training. Only one Marine in his squad had any electrical experience. He had two shop classes in electricity. He became squad leader by default. He told the others on Saturday, we are going to clean the generators. We're going to sweep and dust and act important until the Colonel comes. Do not open any doors in the generator. Meanwhile, I am going to scrounge a manual for the generators. So when the Colonel came on Saturday afternoon, the generator room was spotless. All the surfaces and handles were gleaming like a mirror, but the generators could explode at any second for all anybody knew. They could not fix a thing, but those generators looked mirror clean for the Colonel. The second day of that reserve weekend, they, they pretended to learn something. The self-appointed squad leader had found the generator manual. He said, this is Sunday. We're going to say a prayer, and then I'm going to lecture from the manual all morning. We're going to open the door to the least dangerous part of the generator. I will then begin to teach you the names of the parts of the generator. We can know the name of the parts, but we have no business working on the parts. When the colonel arrived on Sunday, they looked like a brilliant squad of electricians, but they could not even fix a table lamp. Take your pick, be it the mirror analogy, the quilt analogy, or the electrical analogy. We are trying to understand James' message. It is one thing to know Jesus' name. It is another thing to walk in his sandals. It is one thing to say Jesus' name with our lips. It is another to live Jesus' teachings with our life. Jesus wants his word to go more than skim deep. He wants it to go more than mirror deep. He wants it to go heart deep, and then he wants it to come back out. He wants his word to go into our heart and then come out in the work of our hands. Amen.